Chop and Shake Episode 3. You're going to need a player 2 on this one. Get yourself some helpful hands, because it's ravioli time. Mario? Oh, okay. As we get started here with our pasta dough, it's really important to know for today's episode, all the recipes at the bottom are merely a base, a starting point for your own recipes for pasta dough, filling, and for the drink. It's all going to depend on you to find your flavors. I'm not going to lie, I've done pasta dough for these raviolis like three or four different times and every time I follow a different pasta recipe and every time it turns out just fine. If you have to alter your recipes a little bit, do not be afraid, a little more olive oil, a little more egg. You're going to find that happy medium for where you're at. I know here where I am, the altitude is really high, so my dough tends to be drier and I have to continually add stuff. But I would always start with a base recipe so that way you have a safe zone and then you can play from there. So once you get everything started to be incorporated, you add maybe more egg, more water, more oil, whatever you need to get that right consistency. You're going to want to knead that by hand instead of just relying on your mixer. I think you get a much smoother pasta dough that's going to be easier to work with. If you work with it slowly with your hands, it's gonna be a lot better for you. For me, I have so much dough that I can do two separate balls to form in raviolis later. Don't listen to him, SpongeBob. Remember, ravioli, ravioli, give me the formula. 346 minutes later. Let's talk filling. A lot of different options can go into play here, but today I wanted to bring you a very basic ravioli filling idea that's really adaptable to a lot of different items in your kitchen. Today, I'm not actually going to go over a sauce. I'm simply going to show you how to make the base ravioli. So all you're going to have to do on your side of things is be creative and create a sauce. Now you could do an Alfredo. I think bacon would pair lovely with the filling that I'm personally using. Or you could do a red sauce like we're going to do today, whether that's out of a jar and you add your own things to spice it up, vegetables, spices, or even a pesto would go lovely with these raviolis as well. So for what we use, it's just ricotta parmesan, mozzarella, asiago, some dried herbs, and an egg. Mix that all up together, dash of salt and pepper, and you've got a perfect cheese filling for your raviolis that you can throw in any sauce. All right, so I've let my ravioli dough rest in the fridge for about five or six hours. I think that gives it enough time to kind of sit, become a little bit more pliable and workable. And now what I'm gonna do is split these balls in half, kind of round those out, make them about the same length, if you will, a little bit thicker than paper thin, obviously. Um, and then once they're about the same size, I actually have a little nice contraption here that allows me to make the same size square raviolis that are easy, kind of imprinted. But I know that not everyone has that, so I wanna make sure that we kind of cover how to do ravioli by hand without one of these. To do so, I'm gonna reference Pop Sugar Foods' YouTube channel and their episode with Fabio Viviani on his secrets to making homemade ravioli. Now what you'll notice pretty quickly is that although the shape isn't perfect for his sheets of pasta dough, the thickness is the same, which is really important. And then what he's going to do is just dollop his filling on one sheet of dough, spaced out pretty uh, generously, and then drape the other piece of dough over the top, push the air out, which is really important, and then he'll use a mason jar to cut out the same shape every time so that all the ravioli should be the same, hypothetically, in size. So for my raviolis, I'm going to take this sheet over the floured pan, put it in there, force in my indents, make sure everything's the way I want, make sure I've got my dough thin enough and spaced out enough as well. And as soon as that's all in there, I'm gonna take our filling and we're gonna fill up each and every individual dimple in there with about the same amount of filling. I will say if you do these by hand, you might wanna use a tablespoon or something and make sure you get the same amount every time. It just kinda helps your raviolis come out in a more clean and uh, organized way. So once you get that all done, you're going to take some water 
and put it on the dough where you want the seams to be. That's going to help the pasta kind of realign and become one piece around your filling. And then for me, I'll take a dough roller and force each individual seam with this pan. But for you, as I mentioned earlier in the video from Pop Sugar Food, you could just take a mason jar to cut them individually on your countertop if you were choosing to do it that way. So that way it's all individually sized the same way. Now, if we look at the history of ravioli, many people often immediately think of Italy. And while in the bulk for this particular way that it's performed and executed, yes, that's correct. It's also important to understand that filling pasta and that general idea originated from China. It was actually brought to Italy from Marco Polo back in 1295. And then if you continue through the history of things, by the 14th century, Italians had really taken this to a new tier, filling pasta with all different types of fillings. That was eggs, cheeses, as we're doing today, fish, fruits, herbs, meats, vegetables, all of different kinds. And they could even take pasta and influence different things into it as well. That's where you get different pasta colors, such as like reds or purples, if you will, yellows, just by incorporating different styles of ingredients into the pasta dough, different fillings, and really just kind of evolving pasta into what it is today. That's why Italy really takes the bulk of claim for dishes like ravioli, whereas in the beginning, it all really did start with China. As you see now, I'm just gonna take out each individual ravioli, make sure everything's intact, nothing's leaking, all the pasta's sealed, and sort them out onto a baking sheet so that they can freeze for extra storage on that sheet. So since I'm giving you guys a really starchy sort of uh, entree, I'm gonna give you a really refreshing drink and we're gonna base it on gin this time around and it's just a classic twist on a gin and tonic. If we look back at the basic drink that is a gin and tonic, we really have to understand gin. Back in London around the 1720s, gin and other botanicals became popular as people believed they held certain medicinal properties. In turn, nearly everyone was making their own gins at home during this time. Now, if you fast forward a bit to a different issue, quinine was being extracted from bark and was being used as a deterrent for malaria. People would often add this to water and sugar, making what has eventually evolved into tonic water. Now, combining these two things became wildly popular as was widely received as a medical drink. Now, while instead of using tonic water today, I'll just top off with sparkling water, it's important to have our roots in place as to not lose sight of the gin flavor palette. As you can see, I've paired strawberries and cucumbers with the gin from Rosie Distillery out of Portland. I'm also adding a dash or two of cardamom bitters from the Bitter Housewife, as I think that adds a dash of flavor that I'm missing by using, using sparkling water instead of tonic. And lastly, for an added spice, a bit of cracked black pepper. Now make sure to muddle your strawberries and cucumbers and muddle them good. Add everything except your bubbles into your shaker and shake it very well. Now strain this, pour it over the rocks and add your choice of tonic or substitute as I've mentioned earlier. And then you have one beautifully earthy and refreshing drink. All right, you guys, now we're nearing the end. So let's get our ravioli wrapped up. So we've got our water boiling, it's time to eat. So let's take our raw ravioli and toss it in there. In the meantime, I mentioned earlier, you can take that ravioli and freeze it, save it for later. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it into that freezer on a baking sheet and let it freeze overnight. In the morning, I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and they'll cook in honestly five to 10 minutes, more like five in boiling water and you can serve it at any time. But for now, with my raw ravioli, they've been in the boiling water. As soon as they're floating, that's when they're done. You're gonna pull those off, put them in a bowl, add your sauce. As I mentioned before, no sauce recipe for me today, just whatever you want. Put that next to your drink and you've got dinner. I can't thank you guys for tuning in for episode three. Stay tuned for episode four. It's coming soon, but for now, make sure you freeze up those extra raviolis. They're gonna be great tomorrow when you don't wanna cook. Set that out.